Hey, what's up? This is Matt Harvey from Exhumed, Gruesome, Pounder, and Scarecrow, and you are experiencing Poppet's Corner. Cheers. All right. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another uh, episode of Poppet's Corner. That's how you started out, my friend. Yeah. And uh, I'm joined. I'm joined by by two of the uh, two of the uh, the veterans here of the uh, metal community. At least when we were all playing, we were all you know still playing together. But we were playing obviously years prior for like a good decade, good decade yeah. plus now. Yeah. Yeah. Just about. So, Mr. Mr. Conan and Mr. Mario, who have have nobody's fucking seen in uh, in a couple years of uh, Ex Mortis. Yeah. Where's Where he been? been? <laughs> The back of a milk carton. <laughs> dude, yeah. that that needs to be on your merch table. I know, like right? like a mer milk carton and says missing where's, Mario. Where's Mario? Where's Mario? Where did Mario go? go? <laughs> Have you seen him? Please tip anyway. a dollar to help find him. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you guys for for giving me the opportunity to to conduct this interview and uh, oh, yeah, get dude. to know more of the Ex Mortis story. So um, yeah, for sure. If uh, you don't mind, I'm going to go through your entire discography. And uh, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, let's yeah. get started. So, sure. um, I'm going to ask uh, pretty much, you know, uh, question by question, and I'll, and I'll just wait for both responses and kind of like, because oh, okay. I've never done one where with actually like yeah. two people. Totally. Usually, it's just like a one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Yeah. That's why it's called Pop It's Corner. So it's like a boxing. Oh, oh I see. You know, like it's. You gotta put gloves like, on. I know. Yeah, I know we should. Then I can't <laughs> fucking. The I can't uh, <laughs> control anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can't gotta try it. Fucking like, move okay. it. Well, bigger yeah. knobs, you can fucking punch yeah. those yeah. knobs. Yeah. Do you just do buttons, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, get the Hulk hands, the Hulk, the oh, yeah. Hulk hands. Just, yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to try it a little differently today, so you're going to have to kind of bear with uh, the responses sure. and, yeah. and such. So let's get started. Um, I want to know kind of your first recollection of you listening to, to music. Like the first time you remember, like actually hearing music for the first time, right. like, like like the, as a uh, baby, yeah, yeah, no, oh, seriously, shit. yeah, <laughs> like, like, like all the way, like let's go all the way back. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I was sitting, I was staring at a white fucking ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What 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 right. was it? What well, was the artist that that for, kind for of sure, you remember? The, the, the first memory I have is uh, fucking watching Fantasia, like for sure. And I, I don't know how old I was. I was little. I was probably crawling or some shit. But um, yeah. I think my mom had that shit on, and then I just remember hearing, you know, all the awesome um, pieces from uh, Beethoven, Mussorgsky. We even covered Night on Bald Mountain on this one. You know, I think it's long overdue. We've, we've talked about doing that one oh, before. Oh, yeah, for a while. <laughs> never managed to do it. But, uh, yeah, like that Fantasia, Disney's Fantasia is fucking awesome. Now, was it the, the color? Was it also the visual? Like oh, yeah, absolutely, okay. yeah. And I was fucking terrified. You know, what the <laughs> fuck is all this shit? <laughs> yeah, that shit's. Fucking but no, sick. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Friend, hey, so what? What about you? Mr. Um, I think. Uh, well, Conan and I grew up together, so kind of had similar influences. But I, I think, from what I can remember, maybe, maybe just like you know, our parents, and you know, relatives, kind of playing whatever they had that they dug, and that kind of like inf definitely was a big influence on do, us. Do you remember what artists or anything like you that? Know what? Was it, it was like, um, it's Oof. always a mix. Cause you know, it's like every parent is yeah. kind of different. And, and they all had like just greatest hits, uh, like CDs from the eighties, seventies. And yeah, they would just put it like on. Repeat. Yeah. It, it would be like, sometimes it would be, you know, like uh, Conan's dad might be playing some rock stuff, but then like my mom or Conan's mom might be playing like, um, some disco or like more of like pop rock stuff like Blondie, like Blondie era, like things like that, like from, you know, 70s, 80s. It was never really anything um, too old. Okay. Oh, well, some 50s stuff, too. Right. I mean, right. We, we were kind of just, it was just, every like like Conan said, all the greatest hits from so many different genres. So it was just always like kind of a, just a tsunami of. So you, <laughs> have, you, so you guys definitely had like a yeah. melting pot of like all, all oh, different yeah. types of genres. Oh, it wasn't yeah, just yeah. like, it wasn't just like classical or rock it was no. just like combination like stuff. yeah um uh like i don't know what is it like latino type stuff oh yeah. yeah 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 everything, everything. yeah, like yeah. it was there was really no yeah oh and also uh, conan's dad played guitar and his his side of the family is very musical like even his grandparents playing would play and sing yeah and they were really good really? Like, yeah, yeah. not professionally but they would they fucking sing every day <laughs> yeah 
So yeah, yeah, so we were always around like live music, um, uh, different types of music at a at a young age. Yeah, like as kids, I, I can't really remember. I don't think there's anything that really sticks out as like the thing. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of just like pretty wide. But you remember? So do you remember like when you guys kind of bought your first like physical CD and Ooh. kind of what that was like? Oh man, especially well, you in know, rock music, like right. What were you gonna say? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember it like, uh, well, I guess like the first bands that we got into, like where we did the choosing, uh, that's, I guess, when we were probably like in middle, not middle school, sorry, like early elementary school. We were getting into like Kiss, you oh, know, because yeah. the, you know, the visuals were sick. <laughs> so around like fifth, sixth grade, or was it? Uh, probably even younger. Probably. Like, uh, well, no, it was like second, third grade, maybe. Right? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay, yeah so well, like, be, like, yeah, like being into music was like pretty much from the from being born. Like, right. as soon as we could like walk, it was like we were listening to music. But you know, we also kind of grew up at a time where the internet was was born. True. So you know, I didn't buy CDs honestly for a long time. I would just be like, people would be burning me CDs. I remember I listened to like. The first time I ever heard um, Behemoth or Immortal was like a burned CD. And uh, there, there was like right when they came out, I was like, oh, I just got the new album here, you know, check it out. So, yeah, I don't even remember what the first CD. I, think. I know, right? Because oh, my dad had a lot of CDs, too, so mm-hmm. I didn't have to buy them. I just Yeah, that, that was another <laughs> thing, too, is like they were already there, like all the like, you know, all the Kiss CDs and, you know, uh-huh. vinyls. I know you, you, guys, you guys had a vinyl player. Awesome. Oh yeah, well, my, yeah. my grand, our grandma had yeah. a vinyl player, so yeah, we would. Well, I, know, I know there was like some Led Zeppelin vinyls yeah. sitting around, and Black Sabbath, and. Now, did like you that. actually like uh, put the vinyls on, and then like get that gain that kind of like experience yeah. or something? Well, sometimes, from, from but listening you know, to music? since we were kids, and it was easier just to put a CD on, so I think we just yeah, did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of like they, they, it was like the equipment. <laughs> After a while, I don't ta- think too so. tall. So you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't even think like I, I think once we got older, it was like yeah, there was like other forms of equipment to like play other right. you know ways to play music. But but yeah, I think um, yeah. one of the first CDs I remember I got a Nirvana CD when I was like really young. That was like oh, one of yeah. the first ones, and I mean that stuff was popular during that time too. Yeah, kind of right. thing. Yeah, so it was yeah, I was like uh, twelve or something, uh, whatever age, young. And when was the first time that <laughs> you decided like to try an instrument what was the like, kind of that instrument for you guys i don't know for me i i never i don't know i guess uh i didn't uh not that i didn't want to play guitar i just didn't think it was possible because i guess my dad would play and my uncle would play my grandpa would play it but they um i always just thought that was like an adult thing you know like i can't touch that you know like i can't do it so um i forget when it was but you Mario started to learn first and yeah. um and I guess when I saw that I was like oh shit I can play. I guess I could do it you know you know we're you know you know I looked up to him but he wasn't like like a, a, a an adult at the time of course so we were like I, I was like oh shit I guess I couldn't do it so that's what got me to actually start playing was it did you feel intimidated by the size of the guitar and how probably okay. maybe yeah, probably, I, so you're probably going to wrap your hands around the yeah and, you know my hands are oh, small fuck, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But then I saw Mario do it, and I was like, "Oh shit! I guess I could do it." So wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what what made you decide to just pick up the uh, the guitar one day? Well, um, kind of. Dad would always be playing, like just they would be playing songs and stuff, and I was just drawn to just music. Just I was like, "Damn, you hit this, and then you hit this, <laughs> and you put your hands here, and it sounds like this." this and that just tripped awesome. me out. I was like, "I could make <laughs> something that sounds freaking crazy by just a combi- by playing these things in this order." You know, just that what kind of interested me. I just found it it's so fascinating. And, uh, yeah, I started playing guitar, and, and Judd and uh, Conan was playing bass. So yeah, playing well, bass yeah, that's right, too. yeah. I guess, uh, I forget why, though. Like, I don't well, you know. Um, <laughs> that's what we're trying to figure I, I out I think right maybe now. my dad was like, oh. I played I, both. I mean, yeah, your dad played, played both. That's guitar right. and bass, yeah. so it was like so. combo. I guess so we could play together and have a, a fuller sound. Yeah. Like maybe I'm assuming my dad was like, oh, try, try bass, you know. And then, yeah. We jammed together. That's interesting. So bass was your first, and guitar was your first, and then eventually yeah. switched to guitar and and drums. drums. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. So like we'll, get, we'll get into that. But I, uh, yeah, I guess what about the bass made you want to play? Because he was playing guitar, so you didn't want to copy him or something, or was it? Yeah, just... I'm trying to remember, but I don't know. I guess well, I, I looked up to like Gene Simmons, uh, Steve Harris, Ezer Butler, 
And I guess I was already just drawn to it. So I figured, okay, since he's already covering that spectrum, you know, of like what Ace Freely, you know, uh, Tony Iommi's riffs, I would play the bass parts. And yeah, I don't know. It was just, I guess, I guess we all, from the beginning, we already had a sense of like uh, <laughs> playing in a band, you know, oh, what, yeah. what needs to be done. Like, oh, this yeah. fill up the sound with this. What age were you guys when you were doing this all? Like it, around I was like the early teens? Nine or ten. Oh, man. I think so. Yeah. yeah. We were like, dude, just like. Like little kids, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little, little kids. and just jamming in your like your guys's garage because you guys do live close to each other too, right? Yeah, like like across the the street or something. Literally, much, we live yeah. a few blocks away. Yeah, but five, we lived together for a while. Yeah, we were like living in the same house. That, that, that's why we were oh. so. It was so easily just so easy yeah. to just you know learn and jam together. Now, were you the only little kids at that time? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, aside so from like other cousins, but 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 they lived. You know, they lived further away, or yeah. or there was a bigger like, gap. You know, like yeah. our younger cousin Jacob. You know, is a He's bigger like ten, years, ten yeah. year difference. So, so maybe yeah. it was like the connection aspect, where like you guys wanted to connect with each other, so you chose music kind of thing. Or what do you think? I've kind of had some sort of. Well, I think just always being around yeah, each other so and similar influences was just like, hey, it was we just natural. Just, yeah, just natural. Yeah, it's cool. Did you guys sh- obviously show each other the bands and? And get into like, oh, check this out, check this out, that kind of thing. And well, actually, more so when we were in school, with you know, we had some friends that were listening to other bands that uh, some of, some of them we were already familiar with, like Slayer, when God Hates Us All came out, I guess, and um, and then some of them didn't know, like say Iron Maiden, and we would show them that, and they would show us like Behemoth and yeah, stuff, Behemoth, and uh, so it was more so when we actually went to school, uh, yeah, and maybe middle school, I think, is when we started getting into more bands because. Of other kids, you know, getting into you know the heavy music of, and, at the time. Uh, so you so you notice other kids around you of of your age group getting into like these heavier styles right. in the Whittier kind of area. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, some of them were older too. True. Like Mark and Sal. Yeah. And like Michael, that showed us like more black metal stuff. That I know because our age was like we were the only ones that listened to. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had yeah we had some friends like mutual friends who who were a few years older than us at the time and. And they were like getting like more death metal, black metal stuff, and that's kind of oh. And then um, Conan's uncle played in a death metal band. True, yeah, that's yeah. right. Really? Yeah. yeah. What was the name of the band? Well, at the time, uh, I think it was Specimen Thirty Two, and then I think he changed it to Violator after that. Not the thrash. Band. Not the thrash yeah. band from uh, is it Brazil? Yeah, yeah. No, not them. Uh, yeah, I know. But wow, they, your they, uncle they was young. Straight up death metal. <laughs> yeah. No, but this is like nineties. Yeah, right? this is nineties. Yeah, nineties. Like yeah. yeah, and they're they're like playing with Deicide and stuff, and so. Did they have records that that you guys actually checked out? Unfortunately, they didn't really they go like too far, but stuff. they just had demos. Yeah, I guess internal problems with band members at the oh, time. You know, okay. yeah. those okay. always you know the rock stars and stuff. But <laughs> but you know we would we would go to the rehearsals, and that was right. like another. Right. That was also a kind of another influence because we had never like seen double. At least I had never seen like double kick drumming live. Right like seeing someone play with a double kick drum and I was like, whoa, and they were playing like more. I mean, they would even like, you know, jam out to like Carcass and Morbid Angel and stuff. So just watching them play, I was like, whoa, this is like, inten- this is like intense. This is like crazy. So there was like things like mainly a lot of fam- family influence yeah, um, at the base of everything. And then w- was he playing two bass drums or was it actual double pedal? I, can't, I forget. No, he, had, he, 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 he would switch. I know. I remember he would have two kick drums and he would have a single with two pedals and and the music was like i remember he would just do fast i mean if i if i were to listen to it now it's probably not as fast as like when a lot remember, of the, a lot of, yeah but, but it was like still way more just like whoa what is this i don't know you could like like i just never seen anyone play that fast live that's interesting yeah yeah so i was like whoa that finally came into play while you picked up the drums too well an interest too well we yeah. kept losing guitar players yeah right. and uh, uh and then, our, yeah, we couldn't find drummers. And then uh, my dad urged Mario to play drums, like officially, because he was the only one that could actually play it well. <laughs> oh, so did, <laughs> you, you know? did you actually try to do the, to play drums too? No, I, I could fuck around, but I, I was never like, I guess, serious about it. And I never like tried to. Yeah. Well, when, we, when, when we started playing music, um, Jordan was already like fucking shredding. <laughs> he was already like picking up like once Jordan started playing like he was already playing like GNR song solos like you know Sweet Child of Mine solo and like like just different ACDC stuff and Maiden so um, Jordan was already like shredding 
I guess I was focused more on the guitar. Maybe that's why yeah. I didn't. And I couldn't shred, so I like picked up drums. I picked up the rhythm aspect of it a lot more. So when I played guitar, it was more like rhythm parts. And when I went to drums, the rhythm just came naturally to me. And I think maybe understanding the riffs, how they're played, helped me pick it up. And then over the years, I just kind of got stuck. And then it just kept going. And then I'm like, shit, I guess I'm going to just play drums. So, yeah. And what what were some of the bands that you were did you listening to i guess when you first pick, picked up the um the instrument started playing the the gnrs the deep purples i'm assuming was was blackmore uh, influence actually not not so much actually okay. that came a later a little later because my dad didn't have any uh cds i think i only heard deep purple through like you know hits uh collections whatever um but uh the fir- the first bands i guess that i got into were like i guess maiden and priest for like the guitar solo stuff harmonies and stuff and you know riffage too uh sabbath iomi uh you know riffs and uh yeah i don't know i think it was pretty much just that and then of course kiss cuz you know how the the show putting on an awesome show that was always awesome to us we even dressed up as Kiss oh, yeah. for a couple of years. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you were going to post a picture, I, right? I, I, was gonna <laughs> po- I was, I, I did post the picture, but I took it off. Going, man, I should be more professional. Oh, no, I should have. I, <laughs> I already funny. give you guys too much shit in public, so <laughs> no, that's you know. Cool. That's um, cool. But yeah, I, I, I guess that was like our first. Uh, I guess what we were drawn to, you know, putting on a good show and being good musicians. Um, we got into, I don't know, together we got into like Metallica and fucking. What else? I don't know. I think like, yeah, like, I think the, you know, like what people consider the big four and like kind right. of just the core, yeah. you know, Metallica, Slayer, Slayer Megadeth. Um, Exodus type. Exodus. You know yeah. what? We didn't really listen to a lot of Exodus. Yeah, not, not so much yeah. like the second wave of Thrash. That was way later when we got I, into I don't it. think yeah. Exodus is a second wave. Well, just, you know what I, I mean. Think, <laughs> I think it's all part You're right. Of the first. You're right. Yeah. I think they actually came before Metallica. I think Exodus right. was like 79. You're absolutely so. right. They got... Yeah. Uh, Kirk Hammett from, right. from them. You're right. right. Absolutely so, right. Yeah. Um, they just weren't considered the big four because they didn't sell as many records. Yeah. Unfortunately not. Unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. So our parents that bought those records, <laughs> the ones that made, yeah, the ones that sold enough, we were able to hear those yeah, records. Exactly. So, yeah. We just didn't really hear Exodus or we, you know, we didn't get into them until, until later on. Yeah, until we were shown them a lot later when we, when yeah. we started playing more like in the, junior high, the thrash high scene. Yeah. yeah. Now, now tell me about the first band that each of you guys did. Like your first actual like band, like was Ex Mortis oh, the band? Yeah, yeah, actually, oh. yeah, it was our only first band. band. Yeah, first and, and only band. Started in what? Oh, two thousand two, maybe I would 2002. say. Two thousand two. It's hard to say because it kind of was like a cover band yep. where we were just like all our friends, like whoever. It was like Guitar Center, like, <laughs> like what can you play? Okay, yeah. you go here. <laughs> we just you fucking play. jam, you know. It's like just fucking around, and then it's it just. Snowballed. snowballed into like a band and so it's kind of really hard to say when it started but around there yeah around 2002 yeah. 2003 and and who, what was the original lineup when it first started dude well for sure maybe maybe um maybe with nathan yeah that was i think it was like the first our yeah. first actual bassist uh it, you know, he was a guitarist too i guess so yeah we did yeah, know, we, we switched we, a lot too. <laughs> we, had, we had a high school friend named, named nathan lopez who would um he played guitar and bass but he ended up playing bass kind of one of those similar things right. where it's like he was a guitar player but then couldn't find a bassist yeah. and he, but he held, was, yelled it down yeah. well so it's like yeah you just play bass so. yeah so he was heavy into like motorhead too so he right. was like all about you know like lemmy, lemmy. and stuff so he brought a good and i think that's what helped too is we started finding guys that were like we were jamming with guys that had similar interests and um, just the common love for just playing. So I think that's when the when it actually formed naturally in a way because we were just jamming with guys who were taking it a little more. And you were always playing drums at that point in time, right? Um, From the very beginning. No, you know, some of our first de- demo had like me playing yeah, guitar. Yeah, you playing guitar in the yeah the first demo and uh, played a couple of shows. I think our <laughs> first time in Hollywood was the Roxy. Oh, that right. was horrible. it. Was a horrible <laughs> show, of course. Yeah. You know, <laughs> was that the first show that you guys? Yeah played well one of the first i think oh and dude we had three guitar players yeah at the time we had three guitar players yeah it was nathan you and me on guitar yeah um a bassist frankie <laughs> frankie was playing bass a vocalist okay who was yeah. a vocalist around that uh, time shiloh. shiloh that was that's when shiloh joined i think that was when he first yeah. joined and sal was on drums yeah 
So <laughs> it was that was, the fucking it was yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> I it mean, imagine. <laughs> okay, you see bands play their first shows, and they're usually not that great. And they have like two two guitar players, right? But you just have more guys. It just, so it's, it's just a, more, it's, just, it's more, more noise. Yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, it's like what the fuck were we fucking doing? It, and it was just, it was a good experience, learning experience Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. What did you take away from it? Less <laughs> members. <laughs> yeah. Less members. <laughs> well, you're it was, fired. You're fired. It was, uh, <laughs> it was during Iron Maiden, like Brave New World, where they had like Janik and yeah. Adrian and, and Ben. Uh, you know, so it was like. It, well, we, Dave, I guess yeah. we could do it. Yeah. Dave, I mean, Dave Murray. Ben. Uh, I, I don't ben think they had a, I don't think they had a guitar player named Ben. <laughs> I was thinking of another guy named Ben Murray. <laughs> Oh, ben yeah, so I was like, I was like, Dave Murray. So, sorry. Okay. so yeah, sorry. They had the three, the three. Uh, we call him Ben for now. The three. Uh, yeah, maybe his middle name's Ben. I don't know. I don't know. I know. David Ben. So yeah, I, I think that was an influence. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess we figured, oh, if they could do it, we could do it, and you know, we could try something with that. But, but I think that was one of my last shows on guitar. Right. Because the because the drummer at the time, I remember he like just he like skipped, like like cut the song in half, and we were just. Having issues, you, you know. He ended the song early or something. Yeah, I think, I think we so. missed parts and like it was. Yeah, I mean, who? Knows? Yeah, it's just we didn't know how to mix well. Like we didn't know what we needed in our monitor at the time, you know. So we we're like, yeah, I guess I could hear everything. And sure enough, you know, for a song, we're like lost, you know. Yeah, we we're just <laughs> fucking lost. And so I think after that, I think he he had he just didn't want to. After that show, actually, there was like confrontation yeah. between other members in the parking lot. <laughs> and I think that kind of just like we needed a drummer after that. Yeah. And I think. That's why that was like one of my last shows on guitar that I can remember. Because after that, it was like we didn't really have that lineup anymore, and it was like, okay, what do we do? And I think I started jamming. There was a drum set there, and I just ended up playing. What drums. was it? What was the drum set? Five piece, six piece. Oh yeah, like a five okay. piece, like Small. regular, just kind of like your. I, I always kind of kept it as a just regular five piece kit, like a standard. Yeah, like a standard setup. And I was like, a, I remember my first drum set though was a Tama, Tama Rockstar five piece kit. That was my first drum set that was and mine. Did yeah. you start playing double bass right away? Oh, right away. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was like, yeah, because at that time, like I said, we had seen Conan's uncle's band, Specimen, play. I want to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. like, that's fucking sick. And also, Metallica had double kick. Yeah, right, right. Yes, they but, did but have two bass drums. Yeah, but it wasn't as like insane as like death metal stuff. Right. So. Um, yeah, it was like just a combo of all that. And I was like, dude, double kick. Oh, and then like Angel of Death, just a double. Right. I was like, what the fuck? This is like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck's going on? That's so cool. I got to do double fucking kick. Machine so. Gun fucking kicking so yeah, head. that was like the beginning of that. That's cool. So what was it like the first time to like jam with like the drums and, and um, guitar for the first time for you, for you two? It was pretty natural. You know, like we, at the time we were already jamming together. You're so it's like, Oh, this is rad. Like you should stay cool. on drums. Cause yeah, I guess. Yeah. Cause he sounded good and it was, you know, it worked pretty well and he already understood, you know, how to riff. So like writing wise, it was pretty easy to, to write, you know, guitar parts and drum parts together or, you know, separately, of course, right. you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, we would approach things like together in that sense from like drums and guitar, I guess something similar to like Pantera, I would assume they've had a similar, connection oh, yeah chemistry too with uh with uh vinnie and, and dimebag so yeah it, it was something like that it felt just pretty natural just jamming together like that do you and you guys are just doing cover songs at this point at that point no we were starting to write originals i think yeah like right. some originals yeah that Very ended few. up just being changed like a billion times yeah what was the f first song that made it to a record <laughs> that you guys remember oh, writing hate to claim yeah that was an older one right yeah yeah a nature, oh, Actually, oh, the no. first song. That, well, I'm just saying that album had songs that. Right, right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Oh no, what about song? Onward to Battle? Oh, Onward to Battle EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably our first. Yeah. Our, our, you know, first proud moment, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we have something. We actually have more originals that are a little, a little more solid than yeah. what we were trying before. Now, so, yeah. what was the Dawn of Apocalypse? Yeah, that demo. that that was like the first one we yeah, were talking like, about. Yeah, it's like yeah, you know, one of the first. We had. We well, we covered Rain and Blood right on that one. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know what? A lot of those early demos, I remember, they were just the same recordings. Yeah. We would just like be like, all right, let's like change the order and just put this one and this one, take it out, and it's now it's called fucking some something War Gods. I, I, I War Gods EP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of that, that is really interesting. So, but you guys, these demos are obviously lost. Like you can't find these things no. fucking anywhere. No. And that's good. <laughs> yeah, maybe in a fucking box somewhere at home. Yeah, we might have one like lost, like like a you know 
burned on, you know, cause we did it ourselves. So yeah. who knows where the fuck it is, you know? <laughs> I mean, we were already playing shows though. And we didn't even have merch or anything. We were just so like, just not and prepared. And who was, who was booking your guys' shows at that point? My dad was, was helping yeah. us with that. So yeah, he was trying to get us out there and, you know, I guess, you know, figure out what to do. Cause yeah, none of us had obviously done that before. Was he always booking shows? At, like even beforehand, or oh, like was this booking like shows in general. Yeah, uh, yeah no, yeah. no. Uh, I think he got into that because of with with us. He was you know booking for us, and then after a while, um, he figured like I guess I could just do this myself or you know whatever booking other bands. At right, because he's venues. really good. He was really good at it, and uh, yeah, I know he stopped now. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. stopped. But I don't know um, if he's gonna ever get back into it, but I don't know. He's he's like, yeah. oh, I'm getting old, too old for this shit. <laughs> hey, way too old for this shit, <laughs> Riggs. <laughs> so let's go let's go to like um the uh the in hatred's flame kind of era right so you guys had downgraded to like a four piece at that right. point right you, yeah you lot you um yeah. singer left or whatever Shall it is yeah. <laughs> whatever the fuck happened there and then um you get balmar Around yeah. that time, oh, I that's think Balmore, a funny story Bal- yeah, Balmo was already like hanging out with us when Shiloh was there, and we had played shows with him, right? Yeah, well, it was just <laughs> a funny story, real quick. A funny story okay, about how okay. Balmar came in was so my uncle would pick us up after school in his van, right? He had like Astro van, we'd all you know, that's what would kind of helped us take a lot of equipment to some of our first shows, too. So my uncle would pick us up, and you know, he'd take give rides to all our friends, too, just you know, just really cool. and Balmar was like th- another dude with long hair. <laughs> so he was like someone that like we didn't really know, he's but he there. had long hair, and we're like, oh, he, he's into metal. He's like, no, yeah. and my uncle said like one day that uh, Balmar got in the van, <laughs> and he didn't know who he was, <laughs> and we didn't know him either, <laughs> and he was just like, <laughs> he's like what's up? What's yeah, I was like, what's up? I think he he had kind of like, I think we had said what's up to him once, yeah, a oh, few that, times. That was it. Cool, Come yeah. in our van. Yeah, and he was just kind of like, kind of just came in, and my uncle thought he that that we knew him, and we thought that that somehow I don't know, I don't know how it ended up, but it, we just ended up be, befriending him, and we just ended, became friends, and then um, fucking one show. Nathan, I think, couldn't play. Right. He was just out of the band. He was like, I think it's he had bad grades or something. He had to get out. Mm-hmm. So Balma was like, I'll play. And he learned the songs like that fucking day. And then he was just kind of in the band after that. Yeah, he's like, cool. Like literally, it was it like, he was like roading. Oh, so what I kind of missed was he was like roading for the band. He ended up becoming a, f- a friend. Then he would just go to gigs and just help us with the gear. And then we needed a bass player that night. Our bass player just couldn't do it. He was no longer in the band. He had his dad was like, "You can't be in a band anymore," and so we we're like screwed. And Balmer was like, "I'll play. I'll learn the songs right now." And he was actually a pretty good guitar player at the time. Another guy who was actually a guitar player, <laughs> and then literally was like, "I'll play bass." And we're right. like, "Fuck it!" And he did it. And uh, yeah, that's how he joined. He was literally like Rody. Yeah, Rody. Rody like, to, hey, to you, band member. <laughs> you play. All right, cool. You're up. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Up. And and then. Who was he? You still had Shiloh singing at that point. Yeah, at that point, I think we played a few shows with 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 yeah. that particular line, lineup, and um, yeah, I think after that, Shiloh, <laughs> then Shiloh left, left, and they were like, "Who could sing?" And Bomber's like, "I'll, I'll sing." sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it was like, so literally, he was just standing there. He was just standing there. It was like at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, who can do that? All right, I'll do it. I'll do like, it. Who can say, I'll do it? So, yeah, Balmar kind of just, yeah, he just, that's how that happened. Yeah, with him at least. It's a good thing he just got in the van for no particular yeah. reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't do that. That is a, that's a don't I'll, I'll yeah, no, to, don't just don't get a stranger's van. I'll have, to, I'll, have to, yeah. I'll have to ask him. Maybe it said free candy on the yeah, side or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll have to ask him about that. That's fucking Yeah, I mean, I'm, pre- I'm pretty dude. sure he just didn't randomly get in the van. No, but no. that's kind of like how the story <laughs> was told. Or when, right, right. Yeah, when I heard the story. Um, so after this, Balmer's playing bass, right? Right. He gets into playing or into singing after. So he's doing bass and singing. Right. And is it is it the three piece at this point? No, we had Kevin on guitar. Okay. Kevin playing guitar right there, uh, right then and there. But then he had to leave. Uh, I forget what happened. It's grades, man. Great. I guess it was grades. You don't do too. good yeah, in we school. Were, you we were can't. All in high school, you know, we didn't rock. We were trying to do this all, you know, trying to rock and roll, and then yeah, yeah you know, I fixed you know, grades. we're like thir- <laughs> we were like thirteen, fourteen, so it's kind of hard to get 
people our age to be like, hey, we're going to go play in East L.A. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. weekend, are your parents cool? It's like, with a, you know, you going in a van with the people they probably don't even know. <laughs> yeah. And and we were like, I mean, we were we were good kids. We we would be playing shows. and We, we weren't getting fucking trashed or anything. We no, were, we were there to play. You had yeah. a parent with you, Yeah, too. exactly. True, yeah. So it was like, even though the environments were not the best, like, uh, you know, what we were doing there was, was definitely was, just trying to play and rock yeah, out. But it was but safe. It, but it was hard to get other parents you know on board on with board that. with that so it was getting members was kind of hard at that time so we were just always kind of just getting people who just could do it and that's kind of how that lineup was did was there a lot of musicians around the area too around that time do you remember because uh, this is definitely kind of before the internet kind of yeah thing no it was hard up. okay it was like we didn't really know anybody also that played similar music true yeah well, well at that time when kevin left chase actually filled in on a show it was California oh, yeah. Metal Fest, right? I forget what year, 20, 2006, I think. Yeah, we Remember. played California Metal Fest at what's now the Observatory. Yeah. It right. used to be different. The Galaxy. The Galaxy, the Galaxy yeah. yeah. We played there with Testament, um, the band called Animosity that was big at the time, and uh, a bunch of other pretty, like, Our Testament too. was, like, the band. Right. But there was other bands that played, and, yeah, Chase filled in. That was, like, a really cool show. It was Chase on guitar, me on drums, Balmar on bass. Did he just step in the van too and just said, "Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah." He was like going down Hollywood, and we're like, "Hey, you, you have hey, long you. hair. You got long hair. Get in." No, I, we, we, I think by that time we were we had already played a couple of shows with Desecrate, and yeah. uh, we already like knew he was fucking awesome. So we're like, "Dude, can you fill in? We, we got you got to learn the songs in the week or something, right?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like a week because I remember we had to sell tickets for that, and then oh, when Kevin fuck. left, I had to sell his tickets. Oh God, yes. And I but I sold. It was, it was, it's amazing how I I sold them all. Yeah, it is amazing. I sold them all. Yeah, I was like, "Whoa, what the <laughs> fuck!" At the end of it, I was like, "I sold them all." Yeah, fuck That's it. That's fucking great. It, but you did you rehearse every day for that specific show with Chase, or was it just? I actually went to his house and uh, I slept over, and we just jammed, you know, playing, learning the songs, and then then we went, had a handful of rehearsals with him all yeah, together. I so there's a few. Yeah, so yeah, and he he picks it up quick. He's you know he's, he was great back then too. So. Of course, yeah, you only, you only guy. We only get better with. He was with, born with, with a guitar, age. I yeah. guess. <laughs> <That's> well, just <laughs> like just like just like you and and Mario with oh. with the drums. So, um, let's get into the recording process for, for um, uh, in Hatred's Flame. So, the the lineup that lineup does not last, and then Frank comes in. Oh, Daniel, yeah, yeah. Well, he I think oh. he came in like it, it was weird. Um, before he came in. We recorded the Hatred's Flame EP or whatever the hell we called it, the demo, uh, which only had seven songs, and that was with Tack on guitar. Yeah, and it was recorded at Love Juice, which Love was like Juice a Lab, popular yeah. pl- spot in during oh, yeah. the mid two thousands. Like every oh, yeah. band fucking recorded. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. it was like the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like everyone the went spot, through it. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. Yeah, the whole environment was pretty chill, and you know, it was it was pretty cool there. Yeah, and Tack was in in Hexen. Right. Band called Hex and right, yeah, and right. he left that and he joined Dex Mortis and then we did the yeah the whole in, the in Hatred's Flame. So he obviously he played guitar on it and it was it was Tack, Mario, Conan, Balmar. and Balmar. Yeah, yeah. and Balmar B- was singing at that singing, time too. Singing and bass, and then when we got the record late, when we got signed to Heavy Artillery, I think. Well, walk me through that process too. So yeah. we're, we're we're at the point where the the EP is like recorded, right? So right. What was the first? What was the we? Um, oh yeah, the EP. Yeah, the EP. So <laughs> about it was EP you, first. Right, yeah. 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 <laughs> what was your? I, I mean, what was it like to go into the studio for the fir- for that for first that. time and just like? Well, I, I guess we got a little bit of experience from all the fucking demos we would yeah. try to record. Like, and there's other recording sessions that we we've, we've done, and uh, we I guess we never released them. It was. You well, know. The, yeah, they were done in, like people's houses. Well, yeah. Love Juice was really not any. Any like, different? Yeah, not, not much different than, you know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, when you know, when Tack joined, though, um, he was the one that was kind of like, we should go to like a more, a place that actually, you know, has a reputation for putting albums out. And he kind of helped the band in the sense of like doing the, putting together the album. Right. Because he was more like, we should go here, we should go there. He was in Hexen already, and there he was older too. And those guys are older, a little older than us, so... He brought that experience and that kind of like input, and he was like, "Hey, we should go here. We should like submit to like labels," and and that's how kind of like because like I said, we were playing shows without even merch or EPs or nothing, like no banner. Like we would just show up and play, 
And we had nothing to promote ourselves. True. So <laughs> yeah, we were I just, had, yeah. didn't know what the hell we were doing. It was very <laughs> punk. Uh, very punk in a way. Very just like, we're just going to show up and play and we're X-Martyrs. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Tack helped, I think, with that. So, you record the EP, right? And you start, start sending it out to labels and then Heavy Artillery hits you up? Or is it... I forget how that happened. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but I'm pretty sure they didn't just, like, stumble upon it. I think that was, like... I think Tack sent it to, like, a few people. At that time... I think Merciless Death got signed, Enforcer, Vi, um, uh, what's freaking... Uh, Bonded by Blood. Maybe. But they weren't on Heavy Artillery. Oh, no, no, you're right. Uh, Enforcer I'm, was I'm on... I'm thinking yeah. of Vindicator. Vindicator. Vindicator, yeah, yeah it was on there. And um, I think that was kind of like a, just a label that was like kind of getting some traction. So right. they were interested. And then we, I mean, we were so excited. We were just like, we'll do it. We'll sign, we'll sign, we'll... And, the th- and obviously, going back to the thrashing, that was huge at that point. So you guys were kind of lumped into it oh, either yeah. fairly or unfairly. Um, I never considered you guys just a I, thrash yeah. band. So. True. Yeah. Neither did we. I think it was kind of like unfairly. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we'll very unfair. Because we'll there's that. like, like yeah, I mean, we would always be compared to shit. And we never really like, like well, we never really rose any flag up that said right. anything. Right, right. You know, we were never like, we're this, we're that. We were just a metal band. And uh, yeah, we did get kind of just lumped into that. We all did. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah I mean, too, Dross, yeah. like you guys are just thrash. Yeah. We, yeah, but it's like well, but it's not. not really. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so my point in all this is like, obviously the labels were fucking scrounging every band at that point that was, you know, could put out something. So you yeah. guys kind of like got lumped into that, and Heavy Artillery signs you guys, and then you release the record, but you went into the studio to record more tracks for the actual record. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, because Heavy Artillery wanted more. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. they want to release well, the full album, but they said just keep whatever you had, go back to the same fucking place, and then you know. Well, what was their contract for? When you guys signed with? Oh, them? like what? how many albums? Yeah. Wasn't it a three? I, I think it was three, yeah, three standard. albums, and I don't remember what the amount was. It was just kind of like a basic. It wasn't anything like, like, like sick. Like, okay, like, like a six oh, album deal. Yeah, like oh. anything. It wasn't no earache <laughs> record. No, de- no, record no, 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 It's like no. 10 albums or something like <laughs> yeah. that, and they own everything. Wow. No, they were pretty, like, cool. It was like, I mean, we didn't have a lawyer or anything look at it. and But the label owner was, like, really cool, and the staff seemed pretty cool. So it was just, yeah, I mean, overall it was a good experience. I think the only thing that happened was they just started running out of money. And where were they located? New York. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's a far place to uh to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At that time. Um yeah. so y- you go back in and record more tracks for it, right? And then who does the album artwork actually for In Hatred's Flame? For the yeah, the, the LP full length. There's, there's a guy named Chris Veerwimp. Yeah. Ver- okay. Veerwimp. Veerwimp. No, I can't. <laughs> Is he the guy that did uh the creator? Mm, I think of something else. Did he do like Vital Remains or something? Or? Yeah, he did Vital Remains. Okay, okay. He did more like black metal, yeah. death metal bands. I don't remember. I know Vital Remains. Was, I know the one where it's like, like Jesus on the cross. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably like every I- that's Icon- right, yeah. Icons of Evil. Or I think yeah, it was like Christianized yeah, right. or something mm-hmm. like that. I think it was Icons of Evil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude! So the album comes out, and uh, what's the initial like reaction to to the album? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I thought people good. liked it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and you were I, I, was it was it like you know accept widely accepted well, at least I, here well, locally or? It was, seems so. I mean, we had like well, I guess like we were t- you were saying we were kind of lumped with the whole thrash scene, and um, yeah, it worked out. I guess because we stood out a lot because you know I guess we're not really thrash, but you know, Baltimore's I guess voice did not sound exactly. Like, uh, it was way more death metal. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think it, it was well received. We did a tour with, you know, Bonded and Witchhaven, which yeah. are straight up, you know, a little more thrashy. Thrash, yeah. <laughs> I think it didn't help that we played with like thrash bands. That's all yeah. that was around. Yeah. So yeah. it's like you kind of got kind of like got sucked into it, but but yeah, I think you know, it was like I think it was received well, but I remember reading like a good amount of like bad reviews. Right. And I remember like one review that that kind of just cracks me up now is uh they called the band Rehashed Death Metal. And I just think, like, dude, like, now, if you sound like somebody, it's, like, good. <laughs> like, oh, this band sounds just like this band, dude. Check them out. They're sick. And I'm like, well, 
I don't know. It just seems like you can't please any everyone. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, it's just like <laughs> either if you sound so much like one band, they're like, dude, if you like this band, you're gonna love them because they sound just like them. But and even if you sound original, you're it's like, 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 I don't know how to. It's, it's like, it's, oh, they're trying to sound. I don't know. It's just always lame, dude. It's like well, you, you can't s- please everybody. So right. when you when you try and sound original, though, it's it, people have like have like an uncomfortable feeling with that. Yeah, which is really weird. They want to have like their safe space. Like it should sound like this band. Right. Yeah kind of thing but it but it's to me i always like originality over somebody else yeah sounding. i'd much rather just listen to the originals yeah right. exactly it's like you don't right. want to hear like just like a i don't want to hear like a dark a, angel copy band i'll fucking listen to dark yeah. angel so right. I, I always thought it was weird that they said that we were rehashed death metal because i was like there's what is it i don't know i don't know what, what, is, that, it about? what is that i don't even mean? know what that means yeah, but there was like stuff like that where they were saying oh they're just trying to be a death metal either we weren't a thrash metal band or we were either trying to be a death metal band or trying to be a thrash band that's that's the the negative reception I remember for In Hatred's Flame. But I think generally it did like at least kind of open doors for us and and it was enough for people like they say all publicity is good publicity. Right, so right. it op- it definitely opened some doors. Give for, what kind of doors did it open for you? More gig opportunities? Well, more like exit doors. <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> they, they were like opportunity doors. Exit so like, to nowhere. Yeah, exit <laughs> to nowhere. Like we got out of whatever the fuck we were doing, but now we we're just free to go. Yeah. We that well, I'm saying it just opened doors. Like now we were like, we have an album. Let's do a tour. Right. It didn't really open opportunity doors, but just like doors to get the fuck out of the garage that we were practicing in. So, yeah, we did, like, our first tour after that album, yeah. for that album. Do you remember how, how um, the tour kind of came about when it was, like, getting the van, getting the, the trailer, like, who would, was driving? Like, who, how did all that stuff kind of come into play for your first tour? Well, our parents definitely helped out <laughs> with all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my dad even went with us on our first tour. He drove us. Well, Mario was driving, too, at the time. Yeah, so. I just got my license, so right. I was, like, co-pilot. Yeah. And yeah, that was our, our first run. Wasn't it almost two months? I think it was a for month. Sh- at least a month, maybe a, a month and a couple of weeks or so. Okay, or so. Yeah. I forget. Was how long it the it was. whole United States? Yeah. yeah. It was a big circle. Yeah. Some gaps here and there. We had, like, I think, a lot of days off because, you know, it was our first time right. yeah. doing it. But yeah, we didn't really have an agent. Yeah, yeah. No. So that was we just were just calling <laughs> venues on <laughs> yeah. the internet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, dude, that was so long ago that we toured with a Thomas guide. <laughs> yeah. yeah wow yeah we didn't even tour with gpa it was like a thomas guy so we had a map quest the entire tour we had a fucking book gosh i yeah. remember i remember having map quest yeah that was yeah. a long time ago. it was a quest in itself dude it was like it was. yeah so was that was always, a good experience there's always a fear of getting a virus from that place too that yeah. that, that website oh, um <laughs> but uh so what was the initial um reaction for the tour when you guys came home did did, did it do anything for you guys did it did you see your MySpace numbers fucking skyrocket, or was it no skyrocket? I don't think. Yeah, I, I'm not yeah. sure about like a like a like a buzz like that. But uh, I mean, I guess it was okay. It was, it was like a little cool. rocket. Yeah. It was like a <laughs> bottle <laughs> rocket. It was like a bottle <laughs> rocket. Yeah, I was like, it's something. It, yeah, yeah, it did. Of course, like doing the the tour and then coming back. I think it did kind of help because then at that point people were like, oh, you guys are touring. Oh, X yeah. Mortis is like getting bigger. So I think it. I think uh, the perception of the band definitely grew. grew but uh in other aspects it didn't really grow maybe just th- it helped with the perception a bit yeah and when you guys came back obviously um uh pop mortis was uh was was booking shows more rel- more frequently than too so right. uh, he was booking more shows for you guys promoting it kind of out here and then um what transpired in between i guess balmore leaving to you picking up the microphone for like the first time. Say that question again. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was it like? What, what, what transpired? So what? Okay. What made Balmore leave, oh, and then I, well, you deciding to yeah. saying "fuck it," I'll pick up the microphone. Well, at the time, I, I guess, I guess musical differences. You know, we were not really. Um, I guess we were not focused on. You know, we didn't share the same vision. I think Mari and I always kept that similar vision. Like we understood what we wanted. And uh, it just came out naturally. And with him, it was a little different. And you could kind of hear it, you know, Nova Rain versus yeah. Ex Mortis now. Even it's, you know, different yeah. ideas, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it just led, led to that, you know, just naturally, you know, should be, you know, uh, go on go on our own ways. So um, 
we tried out different singer uh singers but uh we were thinking like well fuck man we don't want to do another five piece you know it's yeah. one other person to worry about <laughs> yeah it was another thing where i was like all right so who can sing <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, who can sing now? And Jordan was like, "Fuck it, I'll, yeah. I'll do it. Fuck it, I'll try." You know. Who did you reach out to trying to get as a singer, though? Uh, we tried uh, Mauro for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember we did like a few shows. <laughs> there was um, who else? There was someone else that uh, I know. I'm trying to forget that we were gonna ask. Mauro. But Mauro for sure, yeah. Mauro for sure. But yeah. there is someone I know. Right. It'll come up. It'll, I'll remember. Um, yeah. Like, oh yeah. Halfway yeah, doing yeah, this interview. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, <laughs> so that's like, oh, right. Five years later. I'll Five be like, years later. <laughs> later. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because Mauro Mar- Mar- told me uh, uh, me that story on on his episode for the podcast. So I just remember. Oh, okay. You know, that's why I asked the question. So, um, you pick up the microphone, and hear your voice for like pretty much the first time. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. So well, well, actually, I started this, uh, at the time uh, before uh, Balmer left. We, uh, I, I, was, I started to sing like a, one or two songs. I think. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Like, yeah. like the main vocals for that song. So I was already getting used to it. Yeah. And um, yeah. So, but but carrying it for the whole show and you know being the actual frontman. Uh, yeah, it was very different. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So like, I just you know it was a really rocky start. <laughs> but but uh, yeah. It was uh, pretty exciting, you know. It was. I, I like challenges. When you, know, so. you were still shredding and having to sing over that shred, so it must have been kind of difficult. Oh yeah. For you. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, "What did I? What did I get myself into?" Because <laughs> now you're having to control this and control your whole body and move around. Yeah, it's a lot of really, work, dude. Yeah. At that point, I really had to pay attention to my breathing for playing and singing, and you know, just rocking out on stage. So yeah, it was pretty. It pretty was, difficult. I know it the, still is. It I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, it's so when <clears throat> you were you, uh, so the lineup then is is yourself. Um, I can't remember the guitar player's name. Oh, um, Sean. Yes, yeah, Sean. Sean. We got Sean oh, yeah. playing on guitar, and then well, and then Daniel was already playing bass. Uh, and you guys are more. Uh, he was more IE area too, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Both so, of them. Both of them. Oh, yeah. both of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So half the band was from. Whittier, Whittier, and then half was yeah. from. So it was made, probably it was kind of difficult to rehearse all the time. Yeah, and uh, that oh, well, well, I used to pick up Daniel. Yeah. I used to drive to Pomona like almost every. Oh, you know what we would do is I'd pick him up on like Friday, and he would stay at my house Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe up until Monday. He'd stay at my house for for like half the week, and we would just rehearse, and he would just stay, stay over at my house, and he was just staying there for for a while. And that we just did that for quite some time, and then. Um, yeah, and then, but it, it yeah, it was an issue. It did it, become an issue because like, obviously, no, not everyone had a car. That's why. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I had to I had to I had to pick him up, and yeah, it started to become an issue. And yeah, during those times, if ne- if everyone didn't have a car, it was like no band. Yeah, it was like no band. It's it's like everyone had to have a car because yeah. everyone was so spread out. And the the MySpace days kind of like made us all like like a you know like a like a unit kind of thing yeah. where everyone felt closer than we actually were right. oh yeah Absolutely. yeah well yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah we were able to bring people together yeah right but but everyone was living you know throughout through everywhere, all of, yeah. everywhere so not every band had members just from that same town exactly totally. it was yeah. kind of a little difficult to oh, have yeah. a band right oh, yeah. yeah so the, they come in and uh, you're still doing a lot of shows at the riff house i remember we were playing like i don't know thrash ween with you guys or something yeah <clears throat> And uh, you were getting ready to release your next record at that point, which would be on the fall of time. Be on the fall of time. So it was kind of the first for you guys to incorporate clean uh, singing as well, yeah. like high notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it was kind of your first time singing yeah. on a record. Right. For, so walk me through like that process for the first time of you hearing yourself just actually sing on a record. It was uh, nerve nerve wracking. <laughs> it was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but definitely doing the highs and stuff, you know, because we always loved, you know, the seventies, eighties, fucking screamers. I guess I guess you can't call them that. But <laughs> like Halford, I always I always wanted to like incorporate that into the band somehow, but not you know overdo it maybe. But yeah, and and even then, like I was still trying to find my my voice, I guess, and how, or how to sound. So um, yeah, I. Uh, it was it was a little rocky, you know, trying to find out which which direction to take it in. Because at the time, even musically, we were 
experimenting a lot. Uh, and I guess we, I guess maybe we wanted to emphasize that change of singer and change of members. So, yeah, that's an interesting album to it say is. the it's, least. It, oh yeah, <laughs> it was also like super like, like it wasn't even going to get done because what had happened was, uh, like I mentioned, heavy artillery was that's kind of right. at that point just no longer going to exist. Right. And um, they were saying that uh, pretty much to all the bands on the label, whoever could put the album out first would get the money to do it. Otherwise, there would be no album and you would just we would just have to sit around and I don't know. At that point, we were just like, we need to be the first ones to put an album out. Right. Before so we anyone were like, else. We're kind of rushing. So we're just like really rushing and just, and just, yeah. just going in like whatever we had. I think right. that's why it's like kind of a little different. It's a little wonky. Yeah. Because yeah. we're just like, not, oh, this not, song, this song, this song. It's not as consistent as, yeah. as all your other records. Yeah. And it, and it kind of has that. I mean, that's a, the whole album itself to me is like a symbol of that time because it's called beyond the fall of time, which I feel like kind of goes into the theme of what was going on at the band. Even the artwork is split. We Very couldn't split. decide. So there's like, <laughs> there's, yeah, wa- there's also water on both sides. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, shit. there's like all kinds of shit going on because we couldn't decide. And I feel like it, it's a reflection of just kind of what was going on at the time. So Dan did a good job on the artwork then. Cause he did. He's the one responsible yeah, for I, that, I, I guess that he, album cover. <laughs> yeah, I guess he interpreted the, it like that, and then he just. Well, also, we're heavy into Magic: together. The Gathering. Of course, yeah. So okay. it was like right. the different colors. That was another thing too. And we have a song on the album, the album called "The Gathering," which is yeah. about Magic: The Gathering. Yeah. So we were just yeah. kind of like <laughs> it was like Usual Suspects. Right. We were just sitting there. We're like, what should we write about? And it was just like Magic. magic. There you go. Fucking battles. <laughs> Fucking just looking at things around the room. Yeah. And I definitely remember the reception for this being like kind of like a downgrade yeah. as compared to Oh yeah. Uh right. in Hatred's Flame because obviously Bomber's Bomber's gone, so obviously the sound of the band Yeah. vocally it's, speaking cuz you know it's very when, different. It's yeah. very different. Like when you lose a vocalist obviously it's it's yeah. like a whole the people consider it like a whole new band. Yeah. And, and I think that's what we uh we were trying to push for i guess in, in a way and it kind of backfired and of course other circumstances at the time you know kind of really really emphasized that <laughs> yeah well mo- yeah i mean most bands either the second record's their best or it's the their, worst the, it's the 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 sophomore slump is, uh, is yeah yeah is totally, what it's yeah. called right yeah the sophomore slump <laughs> that's what we're gonna be nice about it today <laughs> yeah um <laughs> well so yeah i mean but i still think it's a great slump. i think it's a great record still i mean it's kind of it's it, it definitely emphasizes that those times of the Riff House days. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. It definitely emphasizes all that stuff. And even the sound of the record is kind of like emphasizes that because you were, you know, coming into your guys' own. Yeah. Right? You had right. to kind of start over and kind of figure yeah. it out. So then you're still on Heavy Artillery. They release the record. It's only on CD, right? Because obviously. Yeah. yeah. yeah there, there, there was no money there was for no vinyl. There's no money for yeah. anything. Yeah. It didn't really even get like a push or anything. So. Yeah, that was like kind of just our, yeah, sophomore <laughs> slumps. <Slump. laughs> but Slump. but then but then like something like awesome happens because like we were talking, um, at the at the rip, during those times or whatever. And one time I asked you and I was like, hey, what what's going on with you guys? I'm like, oh, we're writing a new record. We might get signed to, you know, Eric bought out every artillery. Oh yeah. So you guys were kind of signed to Eric. Yeah, for a second. For a second. Yeah. And then you were in negotiations with prosthetic. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So walk me through that whole that whole thing. How that came to be. Did you just reach out to prosthetic and say, Hey, we're oh. the labels kinda of folding and we need to That's when we started to like talking to Marco and we actually yeah, started working with him, right? Th- I think the biggest yeah, yeah like it kind of like whatever I think the biggest setback X Mortis ever had was uh we didn't really have any guidance. Right. We were kind of just 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 kind of just just going you know what i mean and like i said when tack came in he had a little more experience so he brought that and we did and hatred's flame and um in between right before um i guess right after beyond we kind of had that moment where we're like we should probably get somebody that kind of has an idea of right. what they can do what we're lacking you know what i mean like someone t- that can fill in that gap of like what do we the shit we don't know so um actually marco had reached out um, before in Hatred's Flame, <laughs> but we were like, "Well, what are you gonna do?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's like, "What are you gonna do?" Like, you want to manage the band? What does that mean? What are you gonna like? What yeah. are you gonna do? 
So he was kind of like, what? <laughs> what are you talking talking about? Yeah. So we said, no, <laughs> we we're like, nah. And, uh, and then after beyond, we reached out and we we're like, Hey, you know, I think we need someone that kind of knows what they're doing. <laughs> so we worked with Marco and then Marco was like, record some shit. And we did like some pre slave to the sword. Stuff. Yeah. We, we recorded actually with Alan. Oh He's fuck. Like, wait a minute, dude. I'm fucking like totally. Oh, Here's what happened. Here's the real story. <laughs> no, because there's a lot of little things that kind of like, so we worked with Marco and then we recorded Slave. Slave everything. Recorded, got the artwork, everything. We fronted it all ourselves and we were sending it to labels and no one wanted it. No one wanted it. Like like Metal Blade was like, oh, it's cool, but we don't want it. Everyone was like, Nuclear Bass, we don't want it. Prosthetic was like, we're interested. But everything's kind of like, we were already have, the earache was like out the door they're like oh we're not interested in that and so it was like oh we had an album we had slave to the sword and no one to release it so we had it for like a year we just literally had a recorded album for like almost a year until prosthetic was like oh, okay we'll do it they saw the band live and then we worked the deal out and that's kind of how it came about so we had a product we had everything it wasn't like we got signed and then it's like let's write an album let's go into the studio it's like we already went with something we're like we're ready to go and you worked with Shush, uh zach Oh my God. Yes. Zach Owen. Zach yeah. Owen for the first time. Yeah. So, why Zach Owen? Yeah. Uh, you hit him up, or no? That that was another thing with with Marco because Warbringer had oh, had right. mixed or mastered totally. an album with Zach with, with Gary Holt. With it was Waking Into Nightmares. Waking Into Nightmares. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't think they recorded with Zach, but they were mixing there with Zach. And we didn't we didn't know Zach at the time, but Marco has suggested him because of that. He was like, he's not that far from you guys. He's affordable within our budget. And, um, yeah, that's how, that's like I'm saying, Marco suggested him, and that's how we got. Now, how the- how did he work for for you? Like, how like what what was his process of recording? Did you record, did you have to record it just, like, to a click? Well, he had whips and stuff. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> he, had, he had maces that he yeah. fucking... <laughs> Get it right. Well, you know, <laughs> what, you know, another thing about um, Beyond is that that was the first time where we were like trying to do a click. We had right. never recorded to a click. I didn't even know what the fuck a click was. I knew what a click was, but I was like, <laughs> never even fucked around with a click. And lesson to everyone is, don't practice to a click in the studio. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I just, <laughs> I did. I tried to do the album to a click, and it was so hard for me because I just was not used to it. So that was like one thing. Going into Slave. I practiced to a click. We guitar proed everything, everything, and then yeah. M- we laid it all out, and then we just filled it in. Yeah, it yeah. was fucking. Did, did quick. you bring the midis and then just right. had them record yep. just yeah. to the midi we, tracks we, from Guitar Pro? Yeah, yeah. no, no preamp, no, no like record the scratch, no scratch track <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff. So. Well, right, you just used it from. Yeah, I was playing the, to like eight bit guitar. So yeah, yeah. Like, it sounded you know, funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded funny, but I was like, I know the songs, and it made it so much easier because when Zach was, he knew the songs. Because he heard the guitar pros, so he knew how the songs should go before we even recorded them. Versus like, I'm listening to whatever you're playing for the first time. So he would even go back and be like, "No, that's not what you did in the guitar pro. That's not how the guitar pro is. You guys didn't do that." So that helped. That definitely helped. It was like a lot of just trial and error and learning from your mistakes, and that helped with Zach recording to and a click. You, and everything. you only last like two days in the studio, if I'm not mistaken, right? You were done with drums like. For Slave, oh. yeah, I yeah. Think so. Slave was done within six days. Six days, wow. yeah. The whole thing, that's the fast. Whole thing. Fast, yeah. That's fast, dude. Very fast. And that was your budget too, though, right? It was it only lasted like a week? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so we you had we, to have we fronted it ourselves. Yeah, so we didn't we didn't have a label we budget. Have we were paying out of that. Budget. <laughs> I remember I was working two jobs. Well, I was screen printing at the time. Right. And I was working in Burbank, so I would like, Shit. I would just go and and I, I put a big chunk of money into getting that done too and yeah we just had to do what we had to do to try to get on the label and yeah right because you knew the the heavy artillery was kind of folding and eric wasn't yeah yeah. really interested and and we needed something like we we didn't want them to go off and hate to slam and be on the fall of time which is why we went and just did all of slave ourselves and then we had something to be like look we're a new band and it was a total new direction yeah absolutely totally new writing style for you guys oh yeah so what changed what bands were you listening to that kind of changed your sure. your writing style for Slave? Because uh, it was radically different. Well, I, I, even the members, too. I think uh, at the time, that's when we got David and Aldo on bass. And uh, 
at that time, I think everyone was a little more in accordance with the vision. You know, we were going for like something kind of traditional, but yet, you know, modernized with, I guess, maybe the, you know, vocally shred wise or whatever we did. But um, I think, I think, yeah, we were more on like track with what we wanted to play and we were all comfortable with it. So I think that's what helped with that, with how, how, how it, cohesive the album was. Yeah. And but those members too also lived closer to you. Exactly, guys. Oh, that's literally so, yeah. down the street. Yeah, exactly. So it was, literally, it was a convenience, again. and it was also like these guys can play their instruments. So it was probably yeah. you know you yeah, as a unit click. chemistry. Yeah, the Bio chemistry, chemistry. Oh, of, the, yeah. of the of you four rather than just you two. Exactly, which kind of probably helped that that whole absolutely thing. Oh yeah, and um, so you record the record right, and then you work you work with. Um, who was the artist on the on that record? You did all the creator records, right? Phil Lovier. Yes. Lovier. So okay, did, you, did right. you contact him personally? I, I want. I don't know who contacted him. It was, was it Marco? Marco. Marco? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, there was a. I think a few guys that we were like thinking of. I know. Um, what's his name? Um, the guy that did the um, Warbringer "Woe to the Vanquished" album. And oh, Dan Seagrave. No, that was Waking. Yeah. But there's another guy. Well, he did that. He's done like stuff for Blind Guardian. There's like a lot of like fantasy kind of guys that we were like, because we were going for that like traditional metal mm -hmm. style, like Man of War. Like yeah, stuff, I think we wanted like know? a Man of War looking thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then uh, Marco had suggested Phil Levere, and we were like, yeah, let's do it. And he was down. He was on board. So it just worked out. I was like, cool. And he, obviously that came into your budget, or you had to fucking pay well, for that. Well, it's never cheap. Well, yeah. No, but I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying, like, well, was, you didn't have a was, label at that time, yeah. so you paid for literally True. fucking everything. Yeah, it, it was, like, reasonable, like, kind of your average, you know, what, what most people charge, so it worked out. And yeah, he was willing to do it for, yeah, for not, like, an absurd, absurd amount. And it's a got. bitch in album cover, Yeah, I mean, I mean, and it's hard, too, like, we wanted to get someone to paint it. That was, like, one thing that we didn't want some... I think he does actually digitally paint it, but we wanted it to be, like, um, at least have the vibe of an oil brushed or something Canvas that's like, yeah, of, yeah yeah we don't want it like to look too digital i like it yeah, yeah. so Me too. you uh sign with prosthetic then they release the record then you guys blow up this is the <laughs> point of the of the band's like yeah, just literally. well no like this is the point of the band's career that fucking explode that's why it elevated the band to like a, another level yeah. Well, there's a lot, of, a lot of things too that led up because we weren't even like we did a Dark Tranquility tour, like that was already in the works before we were even signed too. Actually, that kind of helped because when we pitched to Prosthetic, we we're like we have an album and a, a tour we can tour for it. Yeah. So that kind of helped. Like you need if you're gonna sign us, you need to do it now because we have a big tour that we can do for it. So that that really helped. And then also like just planning. Because another thing that we didn't lesson that we learned from the past was like, and also having Marco, he's like, what do you want to do six months from now? What do you want to do next year? So then it was kind of like planning all the steps to get to that, to get to the opportunities that we wanted. So yeah, it's like slave and everything was like, that was like the rocket that fucking actually went up, you know? Right. Yeah. And you, I mean, you toured a lot for that fucking record. Oh yeah. A lot, dude. Yeah. A lot. Well, that, that yeah, that that <laughs> first one, when it came, when the uh, slave came out, we did we did like three uh, months, three months straight, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty yeah. much straight. Yeah, was. and it was like then the hell, dude. Never again, <laughs> ever. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing you guys quite a lot on that on yeah. that tour. Um, and did you also you had tons of like YouTube guys doing like like bus interviews with you guys. Oh yeah, and, like, oh, yeah right. <laughs> so that was had, good from the PR from yeah. prosthetic. Right, yeah, right. That was all. Up. I'm just saying that's why. It elevated you. Yeah. You had all the promotion behind you. You had all. You had somebody backing, yeah, and the band. And a lot of luck. I will say a lot of luck because like we got to do that commercial, right? The Virgin Mobile. Yeah. People, people are always like, "Oh, so how? You know, you guys just got it." I'm like, "Dude, we had audition. We like auditioned. Anyone else here? <laughs> yeah, and we got it. We didn't like we auditioned <laughs> with a bunch of other people, and we just happened to get it. So we just got lucky with a lot of things, like Destruction tour. Right. Like, we didn't get that tour. We had to pay to be on that tour. Yeah. So there's a lot of things like like we still had to make a lot of sacrifices to get to keep that momentum and to keep like, yeah, that that fucking explosion getting bigger. And right. Bigger and bigger. Right. Yeah. And after um, I think all the leaves because he has 
I think he had like a kid during that time yeah. or something. Yeah. So he he couldn't obviously tour. Yeah, he told a lot. us on that tour. Yeah, yeah, he was like, I can't. Oh no, no we didn't no, tour. No, no, it was uh, before that. It was um, we had no, we had done the tour with was it Hatchet or something? Maybe maybe even yeah. Bottom of Bloody before that. But yeah, we had done a tour, and he, you know, he told us about it. So got that phone call. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. He just looked so sad. <laughs> <laughs> like, my life is over. He's like, I got Chelsea pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, we were just kind of all quiet, like, like oh, oh congratulations. Well, yeah, congrats, <laughs> congratulations. Well, we gotta get someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you get you get Gio and in, in Giovanni. Yeah, yeah. 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 An- another w- with your head, so you know. Yeah. It, so the chemistry was there too, you know. We were, he had already learned the songs, I guess, because he would hang out with us at rehearsals anyway. So yeah, it was like it was one of those like, hey, who's, we just look around the room. <laughs> Another Baldwin moment. Like, yeah, it's like you. <laughs> you have long hair. You play anything? Get, get in the van. Yeah, get in the van. Get the fucking van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know you, but get in the van yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm just so you get him into the fold, right? And he's there for like you know a couple tours, and then yeah. And then Aldo comes back, and then <laughs> he leaves again. He, he leaves again <laughs> yeah. And then so it was like a wishy-washy of, of bass players during that kind of right. that whole era. But you guys still kept it intact, like yeah. to where usually when you lose a member, like it could be detrimental to the oh, band. But you, yeah. for some reason, you guys kept it just like you know it, it, the band kept going, dude. Yeah, well, I yeah. think because we didn't announce it either, and we had like the album backing us, and like. Yeah, it was in like, oh, X Mortis loses bass yeah. player. It was like, just kind of like. like yeah, on the hush hush kind yeah, of just, thing? Yeah, just, all right, just you move aside and, and right. you just step in. And, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah. And take a picture. Here, take a picture. Take a picture. Here's <laughs> so now let lo- the light. And of course, it was, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, basses don't get a lot of attention. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but it could be that too, that no one really maybe cared. Uh, yeah. At least. <laughs> I know, no I hate to noticed. say that, but. <laughs> no one noticed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no one, like, no one, like, you know. Well, paid attention, paid attention well, to that, also you know? we we didn't oh we did everything with aldo right but the album is released with giovanni well it has his name in, in the the cassette yeah. version yeah but, it, only, but but what i'm oh, saying but what i'm saying is as far as people know aldo was never in the band because we're making new fans at that point right. so they just and see, they see, Giovanni. They see yeah, giovanni's they just see giovanni picture. just like oh this is ex mortis this is the slave to the like giovanni didn't record anything or anything he just came in right before we did those tours and he came in right before the release so yeah, I think the, the fans, picture. it was just kind of like, oh, this is the guy. Like, they didn't lose anyone. Right. You know? The John Hand. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no, Geo rules, dude. He's he's a good guy. Oh, so yeah. um, after after all this stuff kind of transpires, you're, you're going on the up and up and up. You're touring a lot. And then Mike comes in on uh, on bass. Right. This Yeah, this was... Uh yeah, towards the end of that that slave slave run, yeah. so we were already already working on like new tunes, and then we got we got Mike, and this was before like, try, we were like we wanted to record right away or something. I forget yeah. what happened, but we were already like gearing up, like we need to get another album out soon. Well, I I I left momentarily. I've quit the band a few times. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, after slave after that touring, I was like I'm done. I just I was just. Oh, Con- oh, me and Conan were the only ones driving. Yeah. Mm. And we had no merch person, no roadies, just the four members, and only me and Conan had driver's licenses. And it was, like, touring it through snow and all kinds of bullshit. And a lot of... I was getting, like... I was getting, like, four hours of sleep every two days. Holy shit, Yeah, dude. so you could tell... Like, it just... Mentally, at the end, I was like, I cannot do this. So I left, and then when I came back after, like, two months, I was like... Oh, yeah, we were like, we need to just kind of get back at it. And then that's when we were looking for people. And we auditioned Mike. He was in Abysmal Dawn. And um, he was a wittier person. So it just worked out again. Yeah, it was another yeah. one like, oh, cool. Yeah, it works out. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah you're there. The hey, you there. Yeah, yeah. Whittier, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, easier. So then you guys go into the writing process for what would be called Ride Forth. I like the, that. I like that because oh, yeah. it's the fourth it's the record. Fourth album, yeah. So you're, right, you're writing fourth. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like kind of like we did slave, and now it's like we got to keep going. So it's kind of like I kind of felt like it did fit. It, like yeah, I said, it, the fits, it the fits time, our yeah. story, I think, because uh, the reason, well, Mar- actually, Mario came up with all these titles, uh, "Slave to the Sword." That was because like we felt like we are slaves to this fucking yeah. metal machine that we you know put ourselves into and. 
and I remember like, I was in traffic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sitting there and I was like <laughs> slaves slave. to the fucking sword. Fuck. Love it. <laughs> Sick. And uh <laughs> you re- so you start riding for what would be called what would be ride forth. Right. Um and you use pretty much the same the same crew where you use the same artist right. from Slave, you use the same pr- same producer. Mm-hmm. Um it's kind of like a continuation of what Slave yeah. is. Just oh, yeah. ride forth. It's it just, just right. yeah. carry on, right. carry so, on. <laughs> um, but your vocal style completely changed, right? From slave to ride four. So, exactly, and, and like I said, you know, even with the Beyond Follow Time at the time, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just wanted to just do it, you know, and you know, see what I could, where I can go with it. So, by the time Slave came in, I was I was way more comfortable with how I wanted to project my voice and blah blah. blah. But uh, from all the touring, I would generally like lose my voice and um one time i i got sick i had a cold and i tried to sing over it completely lost my voice so uh at the time david and giovanni had to actually like sing oh I shit sing for the for the sets <laughs> until my voice came back but uh yeah so so when when we did ride for thing i guess i didn't intentionally change my style i guess i naturally started changing over the over the touring for slave and uh yeah it came out it came out that way uh, but even recordings uh, right forth, I think I was a little sick with a cold at the time, too. Oh, so I was okay. like, "Fuck!" So, <laughs> so I didn't, didn't know that. Uh, so maybe it, it didn't come out bad, but yeah, totally different. Yeah, and and I kind of kept that same style since uh, since then. So yeah, yeah. I thought I always thought. I mean, um, the personality on Slave. That's that's why that's still kind of like my go to record for mm-hmm. for you guys. Um, but. Uh, the, some of that personality kind of left with with uh, you know when you when you did the uh, the the right fourth um, album, but then some new personality kind of came in because it was kind of like a like a skeleton witch kind of black oh, metal different kinda, take of it, yeah, yeah, like absolutely. a different take of it. So it was kind of it was kind of cool. You got it. You kind of have to lose stuff to like gain new stuff, kind of right. thing. True. So it kind of fit the artwork too. You know, the skeletons, right? Right. Horses, right. So, yeah. Yeah. The main yeah. rider has no face. Thing. You know, so yeah. Well, you know what's cool it, about it about that was that. When we were doing the album Right Forth, and we had we're like, oh, we're gonna call it Right Forth, and we had hit up Phil Levere to see if he would be interested, and he's like, um, you know what? Like a few months ago, I just felt like drawing this, and he showed the Right Forth cover to us, and it was just cool because right. he, he would already he already had already started it in a way, and uh, when just we told him, out. hey, we want like some dudes writing, uh, and he's like, here, <laughs> so I was like, oh shit, and then he just tweaked it, but. It was kind of cool that uh, he had already just, he's like, he just felt inspired one day to just start drawing this, and it's what we ended up using. And it was perfect. It was like right? the exact whatever. Yeah, it, was, like, it was a double panel, too, right? It was like the focus was obviously the, the, the three guy, writers. Yeah. Three writers, and oh, the back the, was kind of like a continuation. No, no, no. It wasn't continued. It was oh, zoomed, no. It, it was, was just zoomed a, in. It was just, yeah. oh, okay, it was zoomed yeah, in. From what I remember. A yeah. lot of the albums are like yeah, that. Yeah, so like save that. money and yeah, zoom in on they something. Zoom in like, on something. On, yeah. yeah. I, I get it. I was just. I always thought it yeah. was like a double. But no, uh, we always wanted that. But it's that cost so much. Yeah, I know. I know. It costs. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, like I know, man. It sucks. But it's totally worth it. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> what is the initial like? Uh, uh, you and you started started already kind of doing away with like the songs from, in Hatred's Flame from, um, and uh, Beyond the Fall of Time. So you like those songs were kind of like already, on the outskirts. Unfortunately, and you right. kind of just started. Doing the prosthetic years is what I call it. So Pretty the slave much, yeah. re- record and and uh, the right fourth, that was kind of like your new, new your, mortis. Your audi- yeah, your yeah. new your, mortis. Yeah, <laughs> instead of the ex mortis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> and uh, but be, it's because you had a new fan base. So those fans didn't discover True. those two records. They they came on you. They came with slave. with slave. Yeah. For you guys, so it makes a lot of sense. I still love. The old stuff, so yeah, you know, course. I came in on, on that stuff. Someone's so. got to love it. We don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't love that shit. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's always. Not, heart, I mean, you you always tend to try and, and put in one of those tracks or whatever live. I've seen right. like Triumph. Um, Triumph. Oh yeah, we would, do, we would we would yeah. toss yeah. it in there. Axes and axes for but it would war be, gods too. But it'd be yeah rare. Like I remember you guys would always do like axes of war. Right. Song completely oh, left yeah. the set. That was kind of like a staple for you guys during that time. And then we get to the prosthetic years where you're doing, you know, the Slave to the Sword stuff and the Ride Forth stuff, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then um, Mario gets like, I don't know, did you get sick or something? Or what was it where you had to like kind of... Sex change? 
Oh, you had a sex change. Okay. <laughs> I did hear that rumor, too. <laughs> but, he, but he went back. He I changed went back. Yeah, I changed my mind. That's why after. I was yeah, like, yeah. You can see it. 20, 24 hours, and I was like, nah. 24 whack. hours. <laughs> this is whack. <laughs> <laughs> way too many cat calls here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you had gotten like a, like a medical thing or something where you like couldn't play drums or, or something, right? Where like... Oh, that's when I left? W- yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, I have, like... I mean, you can't even tell it. You can't, you tell, can't tell too much it. now. You no, know, but... You can see, like, there's, like, a fucking... Because you've been treating it, you know, with... Yeah, I've, you know, I've been I've been laying off, but I, I started to get a... What I, I believe is called a bone spur. Okay. And it was, like, a big lump on my middle finger right where my... Where it bends in the knuckle. And it was, like, a big ball. It just looked, like, literally, like, I had a knuckle on the side of my finger. And, um... It would it would go numb. It would go numb while I would be driving. When I would hold my phone, it would just go numb. The whole hand. My hand would just start to hurt, and, okay. it would, and it would be really like it was just. It just started a tingle, and like it would go numb, and I would have to like kind of shake it and and kind of regain, like just the motion of being able. To, when I would play, it would kind of hurt, but I think just because of the adrenaline, like during the set, it wouldn't really bug me so much. But after and before, like practicing, it would start to hurt. And it was like that for like over a year. I was already like it was, it was a little ball, and it was it would actually hurt more as a little ball because the little ball would like like mess with my nerves, and it would just get like the twitches in my hand. And as it got bigger, it became a little less twitchy, but I started to get more numbness because I think it was like just I don't know maybe cutting the circulation off of certain nerves. But was it did it come from the way you would hold like the drumstick? Yeah, because I fucking it? I mean I never really wanted to play drums. <laughs> so, you know, I never really learned anything. I never really sat. I never took like I know a lot of drummers have like marching band background or they have some sort of background in drumming. And I was always like, so I just hit this shit. That's all I have to do. Just hit it. And, you know, a lot of the times, too, I would take out my frustration on my drums and I would just beat the shit out of my drums. Like everything that was annoying me or, you know, it just <laughs> so I think a lot of that caught up with me, backfired on me. And I, I wasn't holding the sticks properly and I wouldn't warm up as much as I should have. And did, I wouldn't stretch. And did do you things. ever try wearing gloves with with the sticks? It felt uncomfortable oh, okay. to wear gloves. And um, it just always seemed weird to me. And I don't know, gloves like I don't know. It just seemed weird. And at that point, it was like. It was already getting so like such of a pain that it didn't even matter if I wore gloves or not because it was like what I felt when I wasn't playing that was the issue, you know. And uh, yeah, and then we had to fucking start working on a new album, and I was like, dude, I can't. I mean, I'm gonna have to practice for the album, and it's, my hands hurting. You're already sick of touring at that point, at least <laughs> relentlessly. Like, no, you know what? I could I could keep doing that. It's just like I was more worried about like I'm gonna have to like obviously get in shape you know, to push myself and to execute everything properly into the studio on top of like, I'm going to have to tour nonstop for it. And so you there's know, just a lot of playing. With yeah. And I'm like, how's my hand going to get? And then what? I'm going to have to like quit in the middle of the tour. And then next morning is really going to be fucked because then they're going to have to scramble. So at that point I was like, you know what? I should just step out. And it was plenty. Of, I felt like it was a good enough time for like the band to find someone else. I mean, we kind of already had like drummers in mind. Like yeah. Carlos was already like someone that we were already like, okay, we'll just see if Carlos can do it. And, and um, at least like the album and stuff like right. that. So it was just timing. I kind of felt like I had to do it otherwise because I just didn't want to put the the band in a shitty spot, you know. It's like. And you so. already knew known Chase or whatever from in, that he just joined Warbringer doing. Yeah. Before, uh, before that, Sound yeah. of Steel came out. Yeah. So it was like perfect opportunity to like because you already had Chase kind of in the fold yeah yeah he filled in before so right right <laughs> yeah. so, so he but he came back on guitar and it was kind of like the perfect opportunity because it's like sound of steel is half of warbringer and hmm. and half of ex mortis yeah, kind of thing yeah. sound but, of metal but, dude clashing that's right like metal clashing sound of steel. Steel, yeah. yeah just fucking but i'm saying so it worked out unfortunately like do you still you know obviously you couldn't you couldn't drum anymore but do you still practice sometimes uh, do no. you I no think the last show we played was september of well for me was that creator oh no, it was uh february february, february. uh yeah, fuck what year was it 2018 2016 2017 then 2017, yeah, 2017. Yeah, 2017. that was the last time i played drums like you yeah. picked for the last time you picked up drumsticks even maybe I think I moved a pair of drumsticks in my room. Well, I'm, I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying, like the them. first time, that, <laughs> yeah. the, the, or the last time that. Yeah, you I think that was like I may, I may have jammed like we did a with Jose. Megan. Jose, yeah, yeah jammed at the jam uh, Affliction Studio or this. The, there was like a jam, and I jammed. Yeah. That was like 
probably the last. See, and, and that's another thing too I want to get into. <clears throat> Serious uh, liquid metal was huge on you guys when 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 uh, Slave to the Sword came that is out right. too. And yeah, so yeah. that kind he, of the, the faux hammer, the fucking yeah, that, that it's like a big thing. combo. Yeah, yeah. right. They, All these different like four fronts just firing on every on every yeah. cylinder. He really pushed. Yeah. He really pushed the. He still does, you know. So it's just obviously very grateful for that. But without that, that yeah, you wouldn't be on on air, you know. So that's. Yeah, that's it's big great. Awesome. That's, that's, big all awesome. that, um, yeah. that's why I said like that album was yes. kind of the album for you oh, guys. Oh, without a doubt, yeah, yeah. yeah. without a doubt. Skyrocket, yep. the band. So, yeah. um, walk me through and and how how hard was it for you to record uh, Sound of Steel without Mario kind of there because you oh, were kind of used to yeah, him. That's right. Being well, you know being there by by your side or whatever. So was it a difficult transition? Well, I mean, we actually, you we already well writing wise. I mean, you we already kind of like sharing a lot of the ideas for. It's like yeah. Sound of Steel, so yeah, I did jam for a bit. So on those songs, yeah. But. So it wasn't like too difficult, but um, but yeah, th- now I was on my own completely. <laughs> yeah. But Carlos is also fucking sick as fuck, and well, Zach saying, is. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I was just but, saying like it hit like the mentality. Oh yeah, rise. yeah, like the yeah, chemistry. Yeah. Um, everyone's different too. So like you know, not just drummers, but drummers obviously stand out more. So like getting the feel of him and everything. Uh, but we did jam for the the tour we did with darkest hour and warbringer and uh chase and carlos did double duty for that too <laughs> and uh so yeah we were already jamming so it wasn't you know it wasn't too unnatural you know it was it was fine and um yeah for the recording uh it's funny because on that tour i was writing last minute stuff i always do that <laughs> you know, i always fucking do that <laughs> and uh i was showing carlos a song so he was like just picking it up and like i just show him ideas of what i what i imagine what mario would do or whatever and uh, yeah, he kind of just picked up on that. He made it his own, of course. Right. Well, which he kind he kind of did. Well, the sound of X Mortis drumming style wise is is Mario's. Right. Especially the snare. I mean, right. that snare gives it away yeah. when you listen to an X Mortis record. It's, right. It's that snare. <laughs> you can always tell. That's what um, uh, David of uh, of Nova Rain said. He's yeah. Like, he's like, you know how I can tell it's it's them? It's that snare. Snare. It's Fuck the yeah. way that Mario hits God. the snare. The snare that it snares. Yeah. So a lot of rim shots. Rim yeah. Shots. <laughs> but um, so but I'm yeah, saying yeah. like he kind of did the same thing like what Mario was was doing already and but he incorporated more blasts on certain er- elements so it was kind of a new dynamic for the band musically. Yeah. Speaking, you know. Actually, we we wrote those blasts. We wanted those blasts. Yeah. yeah. Mario's gonna do them too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. Carlos, what he really brought was like the. It had those roto. Oh yeah, he's, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He has like super sick. He has a lot of sick fills and. <laughs> so yeah, he he, he brought so a that little aspect. more finesse. Yeah, a little more finesse. To like everything. fucking yeah. So, yeah. So um, and also we the album we wanted it to be a little more dynamic, probably because of that and stuff. So it's not as um, like like if you see like the audio, it's not like a sausage the whole way oh, through. Yeah. Not like oh, right forth and it's slave. not a brick. Is that what you're yeah, saying? A brick. Yeah, a brick. I think oh sausage. I guess sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, sausage is like it's like this. Kind I of see thing. what you mean. Yeah, a yeah. brick is just like you know. It's true, <laughs> true. <laughs> whatever shape, whatever shape. Black, black, black mamba or fucking some. Yeah, black yeah. Mamba. It's not a big old fucking. Uh, you gotta add the veins in there. So <laughs> oh. That's right. <laughs> so the record comes out. And uh, you did you initially sign with Parsetic for a three album deal? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it was only lasted. Exactly. It only lasted three albums. Exactly, and and because of that, uh, it was only fitting to have Philivier do the artwork again. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Keep work with the same uh, Zach Owen. Of course. Again. Of course. And, and so. it's funny because I think Phil like retired after yeah, Ride Fourth or something, right? Yeah, I think after Ride that was going to be his last, and he was like, "I'm not going to do sh- anything anymore." And then he ended up doing sound, right? Yeah. Like, he was like, he's like, all right, I'll do sound. It's like, yeah, I got something to do. Fuck it. <laughs> That's cool. That was the last start. Yeah. And I guess it was actually, I think it was even his idea to, to pit uh, the slave and the writer against each other. And like, that's like, that's perfect. And, you know, fits the, the, the title and. Fits what you were going for at the time. Exactly. And yeah. And I thought it was really cool. So. Even um, though it just came out. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah. but it just wor- everything just kind of worked out. You had right. your group of people that you were still familiar with, even though Mario was not was he was there, but was he there wasn't in spirit. there in spirit. Yeah, yeah. In spirit. But yeah. he was still Ooh. printing. He was still printing like shirts for you guys oh, yeah. too. So he yeah, was always in, in the you know he was always there. Yeah, still always involved. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I still go to shows and support. Yeah, him. of course. Yeah. I, I I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I'm there. I'm there. But um, so. Uh, 
then you f- initially find your 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 guy now, Adrian on on, on yeah. drums, right? You still have Cody on uh, on bass, and uh, and of course Chase on guitar, and it's kind of like the new reformed Ex Mortis right now, and you're getting ready to release an EP. Yes, sir. This uh, week, I think. This uh, week. This week. Twenty fifth. Yeah. Twenty fifth. I thought it was the twenty fourth, but either way, it's one, one, of, one those. of those days. <laughs> um. Walk me through the EP process because this is now like the first kind of EP you've done in ten years, like, Tw- uh, ten pro- or twelve a years. Proper EP, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, the other releases were just singles, so yeah, this is an actual EP. Um, well, getting Adrian was uh, was funny. He had already recorded a Death to Tyrants playthrough, so uh, Carlos uh, obviously he's he's focused on Warbringer only and. Uh, and it's not just because he does drums, but he does a lot more with, with Warbringers. It's like it's his baby, so uh, it's understandable that he couldn't, you know, join. It didn't, you know, force him to or anything or want him to. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Adrian w- was another guy we, we were discussing about trying out. And um, we had an offer for Europe for, with obituary. And, uh, oh, man, like we had two weeks to get ready for it. And they needed to know that night that they called me. Or not they called me, but Marco called me. and. Right. uh I was like, fuck. So I was just thinking about it, like, I probably could get him to do it or, you know, someone else. But like, should I just take it? I just fucking went for it. So, and he fucking, sure enough, he stepped in and was able to like learn everything in, in two weeks and get ready to go. He already had his fucking passport and everything. So that worked out. That was, that was like the test. Like, okay, he did this tour. We, everything was cool. No fucking problems or anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so they're like, yeah, you're in, dude. It's, it, and his it. dynamic on the tour was, was pretty, pretty good too, right? Where oh yeah. Like the... There's not a lot of bickering, I'm assuming. No, no, no. You no. know, he's he's a good dude. So and but he he really floored me at that fucking that uh, Exodus show because that was the first time I kind of s- had him. seen him play or right, whatever. Okay. So it was like wow, like he's really good. Oh yeah, he's great. Fuck he's, yeah. Oh, yeah he's he was great. doing everything that that Mario was doing except like it was it was his own thing. Yeah, he's yeah. I know it's funny. Everyone's so different, like yeah. playing wise, but. Uh, but yeah, it still fit the X-Mortis fold, though. It's right. still, it still fit the yeah. sound of what the band was going. That's why. That's the test. Does uh-huh. it still fit the sound of the band? Oh, I, absolutely. I think, yeah. you know. That's what makes no, a good yeah. drummer. Yeah, Adrian's, Adrian's good. It was so, cool, like, seeing the first show with Adrian. Because I was like, oh, this is what it sounds like. It sounded <laughs> like sick. outside. Yeah, yeah I know, I right? Like, oh, it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's right. That's rad. That's yeah, right. he's also pretty, like, um, what's the word? Like, I guess sensitive to the sound that we had already established with Slave and Ride. And of course, Sound of Steel, but um, yeah. So he he wanted to kind of like continue that sound, like I guess the snare sound. I don't know. I, I guess I don't know if he's succeeding in that. We have to ask Dave. I have to uh, hear it first. Yeah, I have to, I'm, about, I'm about the snare, the snare. <laughs> uh, snare sound. But uh, yeah, he he he's, he he likes that. He, he that's to him that's like the Xmortis sound. So he understands that, and that's good because that's exactly what I want Xmortis to be. Anyway, right. so um, so yeah. Again, this new lineup we all share, share like that vision, you know? So, yeah. Now walk me through the, the, the process of the writing. So there's a couple yeah. originals <laughs> and then there's a couple, um, like theme songs, uh, three, three, co- three covers. Yeah. Um, and it's funny cause Mario and I were actually wanted to do something like this a while ago. Uh, we cover night on bald mountain. You know, of course, you know, from the Fantasia, uh, my, my first impressions of, I guess, music, right. <laughs> was like i guess uh night on bald mountain and uh yeah we hadn't we had never done that so we finally like fuck it let's do it now and you had the opportunity to do it too could you not do an ep on prosthetic during that time they only wanted like full lengths or was it just no i just didn't yeah i just didn't count it was i think only uh three full lengths and then we're off right yeah. so but so, i'm saying you had the opportunity to actually do an ep during this time well, Instead yeah, I, I just I, I just wanted to, to release something. I mean, I guess all of us did, you know, just to keep keep relevant, even though we were, were officially done with prosthetic, and maybe it might you know draw attention to another another label. So it makes um, sense. exactly. It makes so sense. just you know, just keep keep going. Don't show any like you know signs of stopping. Any slack or whatever. Oh, yeah. But so we yeah we decided to do to do that, and um, we figured the earliest release would be in October. So we're like, let's do it Halloween theme, do Night on Ball Mountain, do Psycho theme, and Beetlejuice theme. <laughs> <laughs> and, and surprisingly, they work so well because you know they're just of heavy parts. Well, every, parts. everything you do works well because you make oh, it your you. own style, right? It makes it the X Mortis kind of vibe. But your originals on, and I'm really looking forward. I've only heard, I think the Swallow Your Soul. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the only one I've heard. So I'm looking forward to the other one. But um, who did the artwork for? 
the EP. Artwork was done by Ahot. Ahot. Hot dog. Toha. A hot mash, dog? Mash, mash <laughs> <laughs> the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes by Ahot. Ahot? Or Ahot? Ahot? I, can't, I don't know. But yeah, his real name is Toha Mashudi or something like that. Wow, that's yeah, a that's a tongue twister for me. Yeah, yeah. And he's 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 done um he's done this he did this shirt design before and uh, many others. So so you've worked with him before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But never before like a you know EP or something. Of course, cause, yeah, we haven't done one anyways. But yeah, he uh yeah he's great. I love his detail, love his style. So I think it captured the the sound of what we were going for anyway. Like, you know, very spooky sounding. I guess you know. And you kind of steered, you kind of steered away from the barbarian kind of thing, right? Too, so that right, and, I, and, I, and even yeah, then, the I I know, and no you know, <laughs> I'm a Lord, we're Lord of the Rings nerds, and uh, the song, I guess, or the, the sorry, the title track, the EP name, Legions of the Undead, was kind of like an inspiration from uh, the Lord of the Rings, Army of the Dead, in the Return of the King, right? And uh, I, I told him that, and I said, uh, "Can you do something like that? You know, you don't have to like, exactly copy it, but you kind of see it there. You see, like in the artwork, there's like." like Mount Doom in the back. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I thought that was really cool. And, um, yeah, it, it, I think it came out great. Captured it very well. I'm looking forward to hearing it, man. Mario, what are you uh, up to these days? Oh, just screen printing. Yeah, I'm still doing all the screen printing this stuff. One. I printed that. For that, um, a bunch of bands, right? Oh, it's yeah. not oh, just yeah. for X Mortis. So you, you yeah. have, like, a whole fucking clientele of... Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, touring, you know, playing in X Mortis for so many years, I got to make friends with a lot of people. So it was, it was cool to kind of have that. After the band, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, fuck, man. I, was, I had been in the band longer than I had not been in the band at that point. Yeah. And it was like a little more than half my life. So I was just scrambling, and I had the printing equipment. So I just went head on into that. And, um, yeah, I do the X Mortis stuff. I just did Warbringers stuff for their tour. Uh, I do Witch Haven and, um, yeah, a bunch of others, a few other bands. Like regularly, right? And so, then, um, but you're super busy. I mean, that's like all you do now. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's all I try to focus on doing. Um, yeah, nothing with music. Even though, um, I think I would like to like get into like maybe producing stuff or. But even, not not playing an instrument anymore. I mean, or? if I did play, I do mess around on guitar. I can play with the beginning of Immortality pretty good. Oh now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <hard>. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, I I I do mess around. I think maybe. Um, yeah, maybe maybe one day I will kind of get back into music, but I kind of want to take a break from like performing. You performing, mean. Right. yeah. Right. Uh, but my hand has gotten a lot better. If I did, I probably wouldn't play drums because it's also like too much shit to carry. It is. It's a lot of yeah. shit. It's, it's expensive. Shit. It's expensive shit to carry. I'm like, dude, I gotta fucking, I gotta. I'm buying. You're buying shit to break it. Yeah. It's like I'm gonna buy a cymbal and then I'm gonna go home and like hit it as hard as I can and break it. Yeah. Yeah, and break it. Gotta so, go get one. Really. So yeah, I was like, I'm tired of breaking shit. You know. Awesome. I want to just fucking print shit. Well, I'm glad you're still. I'm, I mean, I wanted to. I, initially, I wanted to to get uh, uh, Conan just to, you know one on one, and then when he said we should get Mario on, I said yeah, that's a great idea because not a lot of people have have heard from you. And oh yeah, God, uh, what? Well, since yeah, and then and then when I left the band, I just didn't even want to say anything. Right, but just, right. that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, no, I just so. wanted to kind of like. Here's your opportunity, folks. Yeah. This is this is it. Here. Right here. He's here. He's here. Whatever you want. He's alive. He's, a, he's, he's right here. <laughs> so, but but I really appreciate you guys giving me you know a couple minutes of your of your guys' time to to do this with with me. Oh, but no, um, dude. thank you. Yeah. Let me uh let let's give me some links real quick, and then um we'll get into like kind of what uh, the ex when that what's going forward for, for the ex mortis camp. Okay, yeah, well, links like, uh, you, uh, honestly, just uh, go on xmortismusic.com. Everything's there, all of our uh, uh, socials and uh, maybe even EP news should be up there. I forget, I haven't checked. <laughs> but, yeah, um, carrying forward, we um, we, we want to, yeah, we, we are in talks with record label right now. Can't say just yet. Don't cool. say it yet. Yeah, right. but uh, it's, very, it's very likely to happen, and we are excited because we want to kind of carry the, the new... What do you call it? A new cycle of Exmorris, right? We did the new the pros- era. Yeah, the new the prosthetic era is is over officially, and mm-hmm. that was way more um, sword and sorcery kind of kind of uh, imagery and you know lyrically, content, lyrically, yeah. maybe even musically, because uh, you can you can and will hear the the difference with the new EP, Legion of the Undead. It's a little different. There's 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 a lot of you know callbacks to maybe slave riffs and ride riffs, but we want to go this direction at least you know try it out for the first album on the new label. So. 
might even do a little more horror kind of theme stuff this time. So, yeah. We'll see, how, we'll see how that goes. See if you guys are into it. <laughs> I love it. So, dude. It's gonna be it's gonna be fucking awesome, dude. Thank new you. Era. Stocked. Yeah, you're not, new you're era. not stuck in the in the barbarian thing. No, or, no, and I think anymore. the new yeah. age. The new, new age. age. Yes, <laughs> past the Stone Age now. <laughs> yeah. Iron Age. Or Iron whatever, Age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So you, but are you, lastly, are you releasing this EP? Like just by yourselves? Is that well, actually we're listening no under Marco's label, M Theory. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. And, and he, he understood. He he wanted. To, he did. Uh, he didn't want to sign us. He wants us to you know continue on and move on with uh, with other labels. Uh, and uh, yeah, he said just he's okay with that. And he produced it. So that's yeah. awesome. At least it'll come out on something and gain some Absolutely. sort of uh, publicity for Absolutely. it. So. Yeah, and he's been done. He done a great job with it too. Uh, we've got pretty good reviews so far, and. Uh, we did some little playthrough videos. They're pretty funny. They're great. <laughs> they're they're really fucking fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for for giving me no problem, you know, man. Your, yeah. your guys' time and uh, another episode. Well. I'm out of here, guys. I want to thank uh, Conan and uh, Mario Vex Mortis. Thank you, thank for you, uh, for coming on the show, and uh, we'll uh, talk soon. Yes, Cheers. We will. Cheers.